Hello everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. Today we are taking a closer look at an extension to the expanding universe of micro ships. These are some amazing little Lego Clone Wars designs from the builder Fukusaku. All scaling together, we've got two versions of the LAAT, the Republic Dropship, an ATTE to go along with it, the Z95 Headhunter, and of course, the ARC-170. At a different unrelated smaller scale, there is also this elegant little Republic frigate, and I got to say micro designs are some of my personal favorite kinds of Lego models. I'm so stoked to get into the closer details of all of these ships. First, let me say though, if you wanted to build any of these for a fleet of your own, the instructions can be found at our web store, www.brickvault.toys. Included with each purchase are the PDF step-by-step -step building guides, a digital parts list for quickly uploading and ordering all the pieces you'll need. And also for the Republic frigate, we've included another small PDF. If you wanted to print a little extra detailing instead of using a print. As you could guess, buying instructions from us is a really great way to help support what we do here at the channel, and it also supports the amazingly talented designers we work with, like Fuku Saku. I didn't say it outright before, but these ships scale perfectly with the rest of the micro designs already up in the web store, and let me know what other kinds of micro builds you'd like to see in the future, as we are already working on a few other bundles. Now, getting back to the models at hand, what we've got here are the basic workhorses of the the Republic military. The LAATs, the Republic gunships, probably saw the most action and are easily one of the most well-regarded vehicles in all of the Star Wars universe. The ATTE Walker is an excellent tactical enforcer, so excellent that the dropship meant to get them from one place to another is extremely well liked too. The Z95 Headhunter, light in the ways of armaments and armor, played its part well in the Clone Wars and eventually led to the creation of the T-65 X-Wing. And then you have the ARC-170, big, rugged, and so heavily armed that it often carried out bombing missions, even though it was designated as a fighter. Let's start with this last one. The building highlights for me start with the oversized printed tiles from the engine detailing in the front. That piece was originally made for the micro fighter version of this ship, but because the engines are a little upscaled here, it helps to to accentuate one of the ship's most recognizable features, which is these larger cylinders on either side of the cockpit. Some clever space saving connections include the clips on the ends for the thrusters in the back and the hammerhead jammer for the blasters on the wings. Literally the head for this hammer piece is the perfect width for friction on the bottom of the plate, so it's jammed in there. Outside of that, the curved slope pieces round out the back nicely and you are given only an indication of the S-foils on the wings. I said earlier there are two different versions of the gunship. The one titled Basic shows the open doors and the extra ball turrets attached to the sides, while the one without the fully open doors is the Space variant. Both models are nearly identical aside from the door construction, and the Space variant, quote unquote, it should go without saying, can certainly be used in atmosphere and often is in the show. Favorite bit of construction though for these models goes down to the nose of the ship. The single tooth plate in white rounds out well before reaching the cockpit, and the lime brick on the inside inlays that color well underneath the front guns. I like the use of the single printed piece for the jump trooper that's right on the top. This is where the exposed missile belts can be seen, and overall the general shape of the gunship was captured well. In universe, these crafts were not actually very big. The troops were crammed in pretty tightly, and when compared next to other ships from this generation, you can see that it's not particularly large. Now, not taking much of a design leap. We are now looking at the dropship. Aside from the clear accent color change to blue, the model is also longer, taller, and hollower. Due to there being the absence of a middle section, the model is a little bit stronger because of it. The top includes a small hook section with the overhanging 1x2 tile, which is a nice touch. And at the bottom, the minifigure signal paddles not only look pretty perfect for this part of the ship, but they also function more or less the same way they should in the show, slash I guess the end of the Clone Wars movie. Enter now the ATTE. I want to say that they are held together magnetically in the Star Wars universe, but the point here is that the model connects to the ATTT in the exact same spot. Also, the balance is good enough here that you can confidently display the dropship on the back of the walker without it breaking too easily. So all in all, it performs its functions pretty well as a little Lego build. But here is the ATTE. ATTE now on its own. The big feet in the middle are made of the newish droid head pieces and light bluish gray, and the small feet are rounded out with those 
inkwell pieces. I always call them inkwells. My favorite bit of detailing here though is for the quad cannons in the front and the two double cannon levers in the back. When you take a closer look, the levers are attached with a pretty unexpected piece. I didn't even know you could connect it that way. Also, the attached points for the under armor here are pretty genius. And honestly, there are very few expected or conventional connections for the majority of the ATTE micro model. Now let's finish off with the Z95. It might not be a lot of people's favorite Clone Wars vehicle, but I'd say it's just about one of the most technically proficient micro builds in this bundle. And honestly, it's one of the cleanest and most accurate micro builds in our whole studio. The nose remains thin with no continuity breaks. The black ingot studded in its center subtly widens out the front of the body without it getting thicker. But the true sleekness comes down to the wings. The primary shape is a white flag and then the cannon on either end is connected only in the back with a ski handle making up the final end of the barrel. Those are all clipped into the bar pieces that both connect it to the greater part of the body and also create some great attachment points for engine detailing in the front and back. This is some of the finest micro building I've seen. There is zero fat on this build, no redundancy. It's just a solid, solid little ship. Now I know I said finish things off before, but I was speaking purely in terms of the scalable micro fleet. If you wanted the Republic frigate to be comparable in size to the rest of the ships shown, it would be almost exactly twice as long. By the way, the scale we're going off here is two meters equals one stud. So as much as we like hyper accurate stuff set within specific parameters here in the studio, when the model carries an amazing intangible element of cool like this Republic frigate here, sometimes you just gotta build it. The frigate carries a very familiar Star Wars style look similar to the CR-90. I also think the folks over at LucasArts had confidence in this ship's design considering they made it the opening shot of episode one. The thin body has some great subtle angles, particularly the top and bottom trapezoid-like shapes have a strong connection when naturally something that looks this good can often be weak. The cone-like shape in the front sinks into place with little to no gaps and it's nearly impossible to see where the thrusters in the back connect to the body at all. At this point, let's switch to the handling part of the video. The turrets on the model move. The one at the front is a little funny considering the plate attachment underneath it, and it's casual, casual to pick up. The stand attaches at the center point of gravity for the ship, so it's not wanting to lean in either direction when you have it set on the ground. And then moving on to the Z95, it is thin and strong. As you could have guessed, the areas of the model that clip in can also also be bent out of alignment because that's how clips work. But the friction is decently strong though and you really only bend the model when you're trying to. The ATTE doesn't have enough weight for the legs to naturally align when you set it on the ground. So you have to place the legs down and bend everything so they're flush. That cool connection of the guns I indicated earlier is also a little precarious in terms of structure so you have been warned. And then the drop chip that it connects to is by far the strongest of the bunch. There really is isn't anything delicate here to talk about. The gunship, on the other hand, has a decently delicate connection to the side panels slash door construction. So while everything else is basically identical to the dropship, these parts come out of alignment with uh, just a little bit of handling. Basically, that's it. Here's the Clone Wars fleet all together again. I didn't mention the stands. You could see them throughout the video, but they all connect pretty easily. And though the models are small, don't kid yourself into thinking their designing or construction was a breeze. Fukusako has some very interesting ideas when it comes to the final vision for these ships and they look excellent excellent in the greater context of the whole micro fleet. I hope you guys enjoyed this big deep dive into the little details of these ships and if you think you'd want to build these models for yourself the instructions once again can be found at our web store www.brickfault.toys. It's linked in the description below and if you enjoy this video feel free to like subscribe comment share do whatever you want to do. Of course let us know what types of build in general that you would like to see coming down the line in the future. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. <laughs>